Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St Matthew's this morning. <coughs> Our opening hymn is Fight the Good Fight with All Thy Might. just nine o'clock. <laughs> we meet in the name of God, creator, living word, and life-giving spirit. Amen. The Lord is here, his, his spirit, spirit is with us. us. Jesus said, it is the spirit that gives life, the flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. Welcome as we bring our daily lives and the life of the world to share in the guidance, hope and care that God offers. We acknowledge all those whose efforts and understandings have contributed to this place that we call home. We bring before God those who we hold close in our hearts as we pray for ourselves and for them, that God will keep us all safe in his arms of love. Jesus says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And we shall offer each other a friendly wave of acknowledgement, not forgetting the angels up in the choir nest. Let us open our hearts to God, Almighty God, to, to whom all hearts are open, open all, all desires known, and, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we come before God, let us pray for ourselves and our world in all its need. God our Creator, you have made us one family on earth, but many find themselves separated instead of connected. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Jesus our Redeemer, we share your forgiveness but our world shares fear and anxiety. 
We especially remember the people of the Holy Land and Ukraine, as well as troubled spots throughout the world and all those affected by natural or man-made disaster. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Living Spirit of God, your mercies rise new every morning. Help us to share the light of hope in these challenging times. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May God forgive us, Christ renew us, and the Spirit enable us to live in love. Amen. God of the nations, whose rule brings justice and peace, have mercy on our world where we share the same longings for peace and wholeness. May your people, may your peace dwell in the hearts of all, and so banish the spirit that makes for war. And may all races and peoples learn to live as members of one family through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Ever-living God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified, hear the prayers we offer for all your faithful people, that in the ministry to which you have called them, each may serve you in holiness and truth. Through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. A reading from the book of Joshua. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your ancestors lived beyond the Euphrates, and served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. Now therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river 
or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along all the way that we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. Then Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. Joshua said, Then put away the foreign gods that are among you, and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, The Lord our God we will serve, and him we will obey. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. And the choir will lead us in verses from Psalm 84. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. A reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 6. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armour of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, 
against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armour of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth about your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. Please stand, if you are able, as we honour the Gospel. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory be to you, O Lord. Jesus continued, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his followers heard it, they said, this teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you, there are some who do not believe. And he said, for this reason, I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the 12, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. For the Gospel, the good news of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Please be seated. You may have wondered where we get the readings from 
each Sunday, the three readings and the psalm? Do we just close our eyes and stick a pin somewhere in the Bible and think, yes, that'll do? Or is it the favourite readings of the preacher? Well, no, it isn't. We have a system called the lectionary, which gives us the readings for every Sunday of the year, plus the psalm, and it's followed by Anglican, Roman Catholic, and most uniting church tradition. But you may have noticed that over the last four weeks, we've been stuck in a logjam of John chapter 6. Next week, we break free. And I think you'll hear a collective sigh of relief from clergy throughout the churches as they no longer have to try and find something fresh to say about the bread of life. But I'm going to make my escape a week early because I'm going to look with you at the second reading, the reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Over the last few years, several denominations have issued new versions of their official hymn books. And every hymn book revision committee has struggled with the question of which old hymns do we take out? Or which do we leave in? And which new hymns do we bring in? And one time-worn, or perhaps time-honoured, depending on your particular feeling towards this hymn, that had an especially hard time holding its place in new hymnals, was Onward. Christian soldiers. So what was the problem? Well, apparently many people considered onward Christian soldiers as being too militaristic. And maybe even our second reading today would strike some as militaristic. Is it? Well, yes and no. The passage does take up the metaphor of armour. And it does advocate that believers put on the armour of God. But when we look closely at the passage, we see that the author makes clear that the struggle in which believers are engaged is real and dangerous. And it's for this kind of threat that Paul promotes wearing God's armour. We read about the enemy the devil, and the equipment to be used against him. The text is, of course, a metaphor, but a vivid one. And it may indeed shock some to find the New Testament using such potent, if dated, military images. But if we're honest, Reading this passage is not likely to turn anybody into a Christian Rambo. 
There's a clear metaphorical cast to the text. The images are vivid. The author has a sense of urgency. But the text states plainly that our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh. There is no call to actual martial activity, but a call to rigorous spiritual preparation for perilous spiritual conflict. And let's consider the list of the armour. Every piece named is overtly spiritualised. The belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, shoes that will make you ready to proclaim the gospel, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit. Now at least five of the six named items of armour are clearly defensive, not offensive. The only offensive weapon is the sword of the Spirit, also explained as being the Word of God. There is no other offensive weapon in the godly Christian armour of this text. And every item is God's. And the vast majority are purely for covering and protection. We may have difficulties with problems, uh, with passages like this, for one or two reasons. Firstly, I'd suggest we don't take evil and its threat nearly as seriously as did the early Christians. Evil is now often reduced to the sum total of human misdeeds. Nothing more, nothing less. If we face up against evil in our world, even for protection alone, we think primarily, if not exclusively, of human opponents. Yet the author and those to whom he writes are not thinking in such small terms. Evil is more than human. Evil is even more than the terrible quality of heinous, humanly constructed systems that come to perpetuate themselves and victimize all. Think of apartheid or Hitler's ultimate solution. But a world full of sinful people will not ultimately explain earthquakes, hurricanes, tidal waves. And filling our world with purely lovely people will not make these shows of the forces of evil go away. The early Christians knew this, and they turned to God as the source of their security and protection. They even relied on the message of the gospel, the word of God, as their one weapon in the conflict they experienced with evil. And secondly, God is ultimately the warrior in this battle. Generally, we might consider ourselves the real doers in God's work. 
but the call of this text to Christians is to face up by the grace and power of God for the purpose of steadfastness. God wages spiritual war and by God we are protected. In the final verses of this letter, which was not part of our reading today, Paul recalls the image of himself as a prisoner for the sake of the gospel. And though he is in chains in his imprisonment, he still proclaims the gospel freely. And this paradox is intended to confront us with the paradox of our own situation. Where though we are under the sway of spiritual forces of evil, as members of the body of Christ, we have actually been freed from the dominion of evil and our sharers in the triumph of Christ. So Paul, as a prisoner, when he writes this letter, serves as the model for our own Christian existence. We'll be singing shortly in the service a hymn of Charles Wesley, Soldiers of Christ Arise. It was written around 1780 and originally had 16 verses. You'll be relieved to know we're only singing six today. Soldiers of Christ, arise and put your armor on, strong in the strength which God supplies through his eternal Son. And may God enable us so to do. Before the prayers of the people, we continue our prayers for Ukraine and the Holy Land. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine, the Holy Land, and for trouble spots throughout the world. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk and in fear that you would hold and protect them. We pray in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Prayers of the people. Lord of life, you provide for us, you feed us, 
You support us, you love us. Lord, as we have received, may we also share with others. May we share the good news and share our prosperity. Lord of life, hear our prayer. Jesus, true and living bread, hear our prayers for this community. Let us look for the signs of your blessing in ourselves and others. Let us see the cups that are overflowing with kindness rather than looking for places of emptiness and need. In times of economic uncertainty, give our faith reality and practical compassion that informs the sharing of good news in our daily lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are ill, remembering any known to us, and praying especially for any with no one to care for them, for those who may feel rejected or lonely, or finding it hard to cope on their own, and those recently bereaved. We also hold before you the royal family, Charles our King, and Catherine, Princess of Wales, that you may bring to all your people your comfort and presence in their time of need. Lord of life, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the faithful people throughout the ages whose example brings us strength and hope to life's journey. We remember those who have died recently and those whose anniversary of death occurs at this time. Rest eternal grant to them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Lord, we give you thanks that you hear every spoken and unspoken prayer. Trusting in your love, we ask all this through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is risen and ascended and ever lives to intercede for us. Amen. Enjoying the singing of the next hymn, we will receive the offerings for the work of the ministry of this church within our town and wider region.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. For you are the hope of the nations, the builder of the city that is yet to come. Your love, made visible in Christ Jesus, brings home the lost, heals the broken, and brings peace to troubled hearts. Therefore, with all of your creation, we glorify your name, forever praising you and singing. Send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, Jesus had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Lord of all life, through the power of your spirit, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice, mercy, and peace will be seen in all the earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the friendship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of ever, never-ending praise. pray for peace, justice, and forgiveness as Jesus taught his friends. 
our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. This bread is broken in many pieces, but together we share God's love. For we all share in the one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who were called to his supper. God's love shines for all his people. God welcomes all her children. All are invited. All are welcome. Come.
Thank you for joining us this morning. And thank you, Father Malcolm, for leading us in the service. Also, thank you to John Scott, who's up there on the organ. Thank you very much. <laughs> Our Father's Day raffle is in the Narthex, and you can buy tickets as you leave, and that will be drawn next Sunday. Uh, we have tunes on Tuesday this week at 10 past one, and we have Stefan Bulma on the classical guitar. Uh, next week is Evensong and tip vouchers. If you've got any tip vouchers at home that you're not using, the op shop would like them and you can just pop them into the office and we'll pass them on to the op shop. Thank you, everyone. And the final hymn, Christ is made the sure foundation and the precious cornerstone.
Father Peter, if you're watching this on your computer, you had two desk camps in that last hymn that'll fit you for the week. Just don't expect it every Sunday. And the blessing. The blessing of God, the Father, the grace of God the Son, and the friendship of God the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us, and those whom we love and those for whom we pray, today and always. Amen. Go in peace as we continue to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.